Hi everybody, I'd like to uh, welcome you to our webinar this evening and the topic of the webinar is are you dying to look good and I'm going to be uh, talking to uh, Justin Zalewski. Uh, Justin has a um, nutritional website uh, where he sells superfoods and he's done a lot of um, work on health and wellness and traveled to a lot of uh, top gurus to learn all their secrets for health and vitality so um he's going to be sharing some uh, secrets with us this evening that the makeup industry don't want you to know uh, thanks for joining us tonight justin thanks for having us at here so, yeah i'll just start briefly yeah i just chose the title are you dying to look good because i see so many people and especially women and now they're using all sorts of cosmetics, all sorts of lip fillers, Botox, and other beauty treatments or enhancements. And most of these treatments or procedures have a very detrimental effect on the body. So you'll see now that uh, I think it's ridiculous the amount of women that are actually walking about that look like ducks because they've had their lips pumped so much full of fillers that uh, their lips actually don't really move when they speak. And I mean, there's some cases, if, especially if you go online, you'll see some cases where people have went overboard really, really badly and have actually almost disfigured themselves. But uh, just one of the things I, I took some notes earlier was one of the main lip fillers is made by a company called Restylane. And uh, it's just a trade name for high, high hyaluronic acid. And so one, what they do is they basically inject these fillers in your lips or into your uh, wrinkle lines at the side of your eyes and one of the uh, side effects that can, that can happen is things like people end up with infections they end up with uh, other issues like one side of the lip is far bigger than the other or in severe cases people have ended up with like golf balls under their eyes and uh, when they're selling this product they will tell you that there's like an antidote i can't remember the exact name but basically if it doesn't work out you inject this into your skin and it's supposed to dissolve all of the rest of the end product and in certain cases it may work but in many many cases it hasn't worked and uh i just uh initially it's quite hard to find this information but when you dig it a bit deeper and you go beyond the surface of what the marketing and the deliberate disinformation that a lot of these companies put out you'll find some very very interesting uh statements and uh information and i just actually was on a forum today and uh i just thought it was very interesting and these are just these are just real people that have had problems after taking uh the the lip fillers themselves and uh, little had little injections maybe around their eyes around the little lines from their nose down uh, to their mouth. I'll just read these, just these two small paragraphs. The first one it's uh, from a girl and she says, for the last nine months, I've been suffering incredible pain and swelling under my left eye and on my left cheekbone following Restylane Tur Trough fillers. I've seen many, many doctors, none that are able to come up with a firm diagnosis. I've been told I may have a biofilm infection. I have had several unsuccessful attempts to dissolve the filler and MRI revealed that the filler is still very much present along with inflammation. Apparently the film is deep under my muscle so I will need to try it again. I have given several different high doses of antibiotics for nine months continuously which have done nothing to ease my symptoms. The antibiotics have now led to my liver disease so I have had to stop taking them. The pain is so bad, it is so constant, and it is truly ruining my life. Has anyone experienced anything like this uh, before and been successfully treated? If so, could you please share your story as I really need help in getting better? So that was just one person, basically, <coughs> in a forum now. The recurrent theme was that about 80% of people had adverse reactions. Some people had positive experience, but that was very rare. And other people had maybe not as extreme uh, conditions and other ones had, you know, something in between. But the thing is, is these fillers, you know, at, at what price are you willing to pay to have the illusion that you're going to look good? 
these fillers are unnatural. They'll try to tell you that they naturally occur in the body. But it's like telling you like cholesterol, you know, naturally occurs in the, occurs in the body and giving you a truckload of cholesterol or certain things. The thing is, if this is synthetically manufactured, it is detrimental and very harmful. Just only want to touch on this very briefly because it is such an almost an epidemic. And uh, you see these people, and they just start to actually look so ridiculous. But just another one of these people uh, said, this is an update, November the 11th. I had wrestling done under my eyes through eye troughs. I had severe swelling eyes, watery, blurry vision, burning warm and very sore to the touch. I have the, I have had this done in the past with no issues. I waited one week, scheduled an appointment, told him all my symptoms. I even had swelling into my laugh lines. Needles to say, I think they mean needless to say, but they couldn't spell very well. So <laughs> I'd say it's needless to say. Lumps and bumps. I was told, I think maybe, I think actually some of the stuff maybe seeps in deeper into their brain, you know, and sort of paralyzes their brain or their ability to think clearly as well. I don't know. I Research that deeply enough. <laughs> it's probably a, a, a valid possibility. <clears throat> I was told he was never had he ha, he has never had a patient have issues before. Doctor put me on prednisone, Benadryl, arnica tabs, and cream. I had a follow up one week later. The swelling down a lot, but still had a little. He suggested the trees had to dissolve the rest of so I did. Unfortunately, I have severe hollowing, severe lumps and indentations, severe wrinkles. My skin looks like it's stretched onto my cheeks. I'm 44, it looks like I've put on 15 years overnight. And then it's WTH, so I think that must mean what the hell. I'm so depressed and upset I won't leave the house. I can't even look at myself. I'm so scared and I don't know what to do. The sad thing is, I can't even put makeup on because it makes it look 10 times worse. Please, if anyone has experienced this or can be helpful, I would really appreciate your response. Now, the thing is, these treatments are all promoted, they're highly profitable, and a lot, in not all cases, but in a lot of cases, they can have uh, side effects. And one of the things that I think is that the accumulative effects uh, over a long period of time, eventually I think you know the liver is probably going to be burdened, and especially if you get any infections, you know, they seem to like absolutely annihilate you with lots of pharmaceutical drugs, which again are only treating the symptom but not actually dealing with the cause. And that's just on the lip fillers and they're supposed to be the, the better ones and the ones that they would like you to think are completely safe. Uh, the, other, the other thing as well then is uh, uh, another thing that people do is Botox. And Botox is where you basically inject some sort of uh, poison into your muscles in your face and it basically paralyzes the nerve in your face. And one of those things uh, that the Botox does is it is actually very harmful to the liver. Uh, and it can cause a lot of problems with, with the liver trying to break it down and eliminate it. And another, uh, another thing about Botox is when you're getting injected into those different sites within your, around your body, the, the problem with Botox is it can hit those, like there's different meridians in your body and it can, cause permanent nerve damage or it can uh, affect the meridians in your body so to me botox is an absolute no-no and you know it's got the stage where we're really dealing with so many synthetic people now where they're so and i i, I can really empathize that you know there's more and more pressure put on women to make them look perfect because everything is so photoshopped everything i mean i saw an article today and the girl was i think a size six and she looked, I mean, she looked really excessively skinny. And a modeling agency asked her, could she lose weight? Now, the girl didn't look even remotely, like, healthy the way she was already. Or maybe that was her natural weight. But to get somebody to lose even more weight is just criminal. But it is, you know, we, we live in this world where basically uh, all the sort of beauty products are targeted at women where they say, you know, with taglines like, you know, because you're worth it, which basically implies that if you don't buy this overpriced toxic crap that we sell, you know, you don't value yourself. And so it's always uh, targeted at making the woman feel even more insecure, even more vulnerable, and even more self-conscious about herself. And it is ridiculous. It really does need to stop. And I don't know if you even noticed an article today where 
they were teaching eight-year-old girls how to pole dance. And I just think, you know, like, where are we going with all this stuff? At what age, you know, the, the children and then young ladies have to be subjected to all this madness? But it was out there today, and I actually didn't want to repost it. I just thought, you know, yeah. I just, I'm aware of it, but I don't want to give any energy to it. Mm-hmm. But again, the company that makes Botox, uh, I think the company name is Allergen, and they basically had to pay recently a $600 million fine to settle a federal investigation. And so what they were doing was they were trying to get it sold off-label, and they were basically braving doctors to uh, prescribe it or to suggest for things like headaches, pain, spasticity, cerebral palsy in children. And so the thing is, you know, they don't care about you. And just as a very simple rule of thumb, any time you're putting any beauty products on your body, if you can't eat them, you can't put them on your body. And one of the ways to get toxins into your body very quickly is transdermally, which just means through the skin. So anything, any of those lotions you put on uh, your skin, if they're not edible, then they shouldn't go on your skin. And one of the most criminal things I think is, I don't know if you've ever seen of the, you'll see that, you know, baby oil that they sell in chemists and supermarkets, that clear yeah. white liquid. Well, to me, that's a really useful oil. If you want to clean your fireplace, you know, the black hearth, but that, you know, that's the only reason you should be using it because it's it's a paraffin-based oil and putting that on, they're promoting it to put that on their baby skin to keep the baby skin nice and soft. The baby, if it wants beautiful soft skin, needs to get proper nutrition, preferably breastfed, adequate amounts of water, and, you know, to be looked after that way. But to put something as toxic as baby oil on a baby skin is absolutely criminal and should be banned. Uh, another thing that women end up doing a lot of, and the thing is, uh, I see this a lot now, especially with men, where I've been going to the gym now, I would say for about 13 years. And 13 years ago, you could have went to the gym, you could have worked out, you could have gone back, had a shower, got changed, walked out, and you'd have been fine. Now, when I go to the gym, and I walk into the changing room, and you get all these teenage boys and men, and they're spraying all this highly toxic, completely synthetic chemicals, like all these... I don't know, what do you call those? Links. Links, body spray, exactly. And it's like, you know, basically, and and I had this really immoral marketing campaign, you know, helps helps prevent premature perspiration. Like, you know, what are they trying to say and what are they truly trying to do? And so what they've done is they've now created a whole new generation of very insecure men spraying copious amounts of this toxic crap all over their bodies and the worst and hardest part of me going to the gym is actually going into the changing room and having to breathe the fumes of that crap in. So normally now what I do is I get my gym gear on the house and I just go into the gym. I work out and I come home and I get changed. And it means that I can avoid that sort of stuff. But all those chemicals going on, and a lot of these things are, are very carcinogenic or tetragenic, which means that it can harm the unborn child. And so you'll get women that are pregnant that are spraying all sorts of antiperspirants, deodorants, and all sorts of stuff onto their bodies. And I've covered this before in a previous talk, yeah. but I'll just go over it very, very briefly. Yeah. And the thing is, if you're spraying uh, antiperspirants and deodorants onto your armpits, normally when women are uh, sweating, what will happen is that you know their body will mobilize toxins out through under their armpits and uh, it'll move that out and sweat it so it can eliminate toxicity. When you do that, men as well, uh, what happens is that the toxicity cannot leave through the body, so it ends up in the lymph nodes around the breasts. And so when you combine that with things like electromagnetic radiation, when you combine that with wearing nylon bras and women wearing bras, which you know isn't good for them, what happens is that the toxins can't get there. The breasts don't get moved naturally to help stimulate or move or mobilize the toxins again into the bloodstream. And so then the lymph nodes, the toxins, and all that stuff accumulate. And so then you're creating this perfect environment where horrible uh, illnesses and diseases like uh, cancer can thrive. So if you must use an antiperspirant, try and use something like a salt stick or something that's very natural. 
but using those highly synthetic, highly carcinogenic chemicals on their arms is probably one of the worst things you could do for your breast health ever. And so it's just a small thing. And the thing is, it's rare, but men also get breast cancer, but it is quite rare. But, you know, if women are afraid, and they, another thing they'll do is they'll want women to go and get mammograms. Like mammograms cause cancer. And it's very hard in certain cases to get an accurate reading. So if for any case or any time you're concerned about breast health, go and do something called thermography, which is basically like how they basically assess your breasts using heat, like the, the like heat detection. And they're, it's far more accurate. And uh, it's a completely non-invasive way, whereas mammograms are given off uh, high amounts of radiation and radiation is very, very detrimental to the body and should be avoided in all cases, if at all possible. There are certain times, you know, you could have had an accident, you're in bits, you need an x-ray to see which bits that you need to put back together. Absolutely, I'd say that's an absolute emergency. But in other cases, I would definitely uh, discourage people from doing routine mammograms. I think they're one of the most uh, missold, mismarketed things that they could ever do to someone's body. Another thing that... Uh, you see women doing a lot of is using hair dryers. And so hair dryers, uh, they may be very convenient, but what you're doing is you've got this huge, and you'll see now, like it's like years ago you had hair dryers and they were quite small or they may have fitted into a bag. These things mm -hmm. now are like, like motor scooters, the size of them, the noise they put off, some of them are so big and it's, you know, we've got the biggest, best, whatever. That is a very concentrated amount of electromagnetic radiation being directly thrown at your head. And the closer to your head that is, the more that's going to actually affect your health. And so, if at all possible, it would be best to avoid using hair dryers. If you feel you have to use one, then use it as short a period of time as possible and hold it away from your head as far as you possibly can. And that will help minimize or reduce the effects of electromagnetic radiation. And electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation really does harm the body. It knocks the body's circadian rhythms out. It really interrupts and uh, affects cellular communication. And it's one of those things that, if at all possible, you know, it would be good to try and reduce or even completely eliminate. Again, then you'll see things like the, we call those things, the straighteners, yeah. And so, again, they're like an energy source that's held very, very close to the head. And you'll see when we're doing that for sometimes 10, 15, 20 minutes, you know, that is another source of electromagnetic radiation, which, again, is really affecting the body. Or, again, you'll see the, well, it's more like the younger generation. They'll be going out somewhere, and they'll actually take their mobile phone, which is another source of electromagnetic radiation. Even when it's not being used, it's still used as a booster station. It's still eliminating, or sorry, emanating uh, radio waves. And so if you can imagine that there are a lot of young girls put that into their bra directly over their heart, and then they'll keep that there for many, many hours throughout the whole night. Like that, that's really harmful. Most people are probably not aware of how, how harmful it is. But when you end up doing things like uh, the electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation from all these different sources, you're doing all the, the hair colorants, all the different makeup things that they do, all the deodorants, the chemicals they use in the shower, and all that stuff. Eventually, the body is just being overloaded more and more and more and more. And, you know, I think is the average woman swallows something like seven pounds of lipstick in her lifetime and depending on the type and the brand of lipstick some of these lipsticks contain lead and uh, they can be very cancer causing and you know a lot of women are out there thinking wow you know it makes me look so 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 good and you'll see them like touching up every five minutes the thing is that the guys that actually see them wouldn't notice whether they'll touch their makeup or not but they seem to be so programmed to keep doing it and doing it, doing it. And I just think it's very sad that, you know, our society has become so superficial that, you know, some women, you look at them and they've like, had silicone enhancements, lip fillers, Botox, they're, they're doing all sorts of things with their eyebrows and their eyelashes. 
uh, and all sorts of other surgeries. Then you've got the, I don't know, if you ever look inside or had the misfortune of having ever look for something inside a woman's handbag, there's usually about 50 different items. And I don't know, I mean, there's, there's probably some theory behind it, but, you know, <laughs> I haven't really figured it out yet. But, but the thing is, most of these things are going to get used before they go out for a night or in their routine preparation before they face the world. And in extreme cases, these things can be very, very uh, detrimental and very carcinogenic. But even the best sources, a lot of the makeup companies would try to market some of their products as natural or what they'll do is they'll have a leading product that's natural and you'll read it and you'll actually find that the stuff is actually quite good. And they'll promote that almost in a like a sleight of hand or a way to distract you. But then they'll have a whole range of all other stuff that's full of all the crap of the day. And I've had women before saying, oh no, my makeup's all completely natural, it's really good. And what you'll do is you'll see that the one product, something that's simple to do, will have all natural products. I still don't think they're that good. They're probably not anywhere near as harmful. But then you'll look at the rest of the range and you'll find all these hidden nasties in. And you know, some of the favorite things that they put in uh, beauty care products and stuff are things like sodium laurel sulfate. Uh, they'll put in things like fragrance, paraffin, and lots of petroleum-based products, all of which are really nasty and harmful to the body. And there's a great website if anybody ever wants to take a bit of time and do it. It's the EW, it's EWG.org or environmentalworkinggroup.org. And so if you go onto their website and you have a, a certain brand of cosmetic makeup or any beauty product or shampoo, you can, they, I can't remember how many products they list, but I think it's something like 80,000 products. And so you'll go on to that site and it'll tell you the risk associated with that product and each ingredient. And so a lot of them you'll see, like it'll be at even like it, where, where zero is it's completely safe and nine it's completely toxic. A lot of these things will be in the high numbers like the sevens, the eight and the nine. Sometimes you'll get one or two of the products will be one or two or a zero. But in general, and I'm always looking and researching and checking things, most of the makeup products out there are really nasty, even the ones that are let, let, would try to lead you to believe that they're all completely natural. You know, in marketing, natural doesn't really mean anything. They can put in, I think, especially in the likes of uh, supplements, they can put in as little as 10% of natural and pro, natural ingredient, have 90% synthetic crap and still call it natural. So be very, very aware, be very vigilant, and pay particular attention uh, to anything that you're being sold. You know, and I've said this so many times before, beauty truly is an inside job. So if you want to give yourself that glowing, amazing, radiant skin, the best way to do it is to do it from your dad, from your lifestyle, and not living a very hectic, toxic, poisonous lifestyle, and then using all sorts of chemicals to treat uh, the conditions or the symptoms of uh, dehydration or that you're abusing your body or that you're eating highly processed microwave nutritionally deficient food. So simple things like uh, drinking adequate amounts of water every day. On average, a person would need to drink at least two liters of water a day. Again, if you want really good skin, you know, you have to put water in your body. It's the only way it's going to, your body's going to eliminate toxins properly. It's the only way you're going to be able to have proper cellular communication. And the thing is, you know, I look at people regularly and you look at their skin. And the thing is, the skin is the last place they ever get water because it's the least important to the body. So when you look at a person's skin or face, you can usually tell right away that they're either dehydrated or chronically dehydrated. But when you do that alone, that will allow the body to clean itself It'll allow it to function really well and it'll allow your body and your, your liver and your kidneys to filter out the toxins. And one very quick way to know if you uh, are dehydrated or not is if you look at your urine and if there's any color in your urine or you know it's maybe a very light straw yellow color, that's fine. But if the darker the color of your urine, the more dehydrated you are. And by the time you even feel thirsty, you're already dehydrated. 
And so simple things like that make a massive, massive difference. The next thing is getting high quality omega-3 oils into your diet. Uh, you know, I personally like things like hemp oil. I think they're really good. I t at other times, I take other oils like uh, coconut oil. I think coconut oil is really good for your skin. It's one of those oils that, you know, it's full of lauric acid. It's the only oil that you can actually use in the bedroom, the bathroom, and the kitchen. And uh, to me, I just think it's it's a great all-rounder. It's good for taking off your makeup, and it's good for uh, definitely applying on your skin. Then other things that your body, if you want to make yourself age very rapidly, if you're eating things like lots of dairy products, processed foods, cheese, uh, microwave foods, processed meats, because a lot of those meats that people eat are full of nitrosamines, like sodium nitrite and sodium nitrate, E250, I think, and 251. And so these meats are cancer-causing. They cause untold damage in the body. And so, you know, a lot of people will spend, this is, this is totally amazes me, women will spend 30, 40, 50 pounds on a tub of this carcinogenic, harmful to the body powder, yet they wouldn't spend half that amount of money on high quality supplementation or nutrition. And truly, if you want to look beautiful, the best way to do it is to radiate your inner beauty from within. And when you do that nutritionally, what you're going to do is you're setting your cells up that every cell in your body is functioning optimally. The body is cleansing itself. Your skin is going to be the most supple and most uh, elastic that it can be. And your body is going to be in the best and most optimal balance. But there is no substitute for a proper, really good quality diet. And other things, like the, one of the things that will eat, make you ease the most rapidly is something like uh, sugar. Anything with sugar, people, you know, I work with people a lot and one of the things I hear is, you know, oh, my dad's really good. And, you know, I, I'm looking at them and I'm looking at what they're telling me they're eating and they think their dad's good. And the thing is, their, their, their body looks worn, they look tired, they've no energy, they've no uh, life force really within them. And they're, they're basically constantly fatigued, they've no energy, they get colds and they're breaking down. And to me, this is all completely preventable, totally avoidable. But most people, what they're looking for is the quick fix. And the thing is, the quick fix is a complete illusion. And the illusion of the quick fix is a multi-billion dollar industry. And you look at these people, uh, <clears throat> they'll have, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll have adverts on TV for things like certain cereals. And, you know, just take a bowl of this a day and, you know, It'll help you lose weight and all that sort of stuff. And it couldn't be further from the truth. They're totally full of carbohydrates, which break down into sugars. They're highly processed, but people want to believe that they're doing the right thing. So what they'll do is, uh, if, you have, if you're concerned about sugar, if it's low sugar, it's going to be really high in the bad fats. If it's low in fat, it's, well, it's really going to be uh, high in red probably the bad sugars. And so marketing is such a criminal occupation, I think, in certain cases, that they basically can make anything look like anything. And people want to believe that they've got the magic bullet, the cure, or that they can burn the candle at both ends. And without any judgment, you know, all of us are a perfect reflection of what we do to our bodies on a daily basis. And you know, for me, my routine starts at 6.45 in the morning, I'm up, I walk for at least 30 minutes, I meditate for an hour to two hours every day, then I'll probably hit the gym, I'll probably then do the sauna for an hour. And you know, as soon as I get up, the first thing I do is I drink a pint of warm water. And the reason why you wanna drink warm water is that when you drink cold water, it shocks your liver, and it's actually quite harsh in the system. Now some people, don't like the taste of water, which I find bizarre, but I've heard certain people say it. But one thing you can do is squeeze like proper, uh, like a a real lemon into it. Not that stuff you get in a plastic tub is supposed to look like a lemon, that's just a chemical <laughs> junk. But <Yeah. clears throat> real lemon juice squeezed out of a lemon. And so it really does make uh, 
the water much more, uh, what would you say, palatable. And, you know, drinking lemon juice in your water can also, you know, help digestion. It alkalizes your body. And there's a lot of benefits. I used to do it every day for many years. But one of the things I found was that when I took the lemon juice in the water every day, I could feel it was like quite hard on my teeth. And so in the end, I actually stopped it because I just, I just felt that it was making my teeth far too sensitive. So I, in the end, what I did is I just sort of decided that, you know, I wouldn't do it anymore. But I think it's still, it would get you into the way of, of drinking water and stuff. But uh, one of the things that for me is that if you do this consistently over a long period of time, you're basically setting the game up so that you can really, really win. And so most people go through life and they don't actually take time for their health. And what happens is eventually the body gets to the stage where it starts to communicate this more and more and more. And then eventually most people end up having a healing crisis. And so one thing, and I say this all the time, is that if you don't make time for your health now, you are most definitely going to have to make time for sickness and disease later on. And it's, it's amazing that, you know, I remember doing a seminar probably, I don't know, three or four years ago, and this one guy came, and uh, he was he had a, he had a Ferrari, and he used to buy oil, I can't remember, it was a 10 pound or 15 pound a litre to put into his car, and the car, everything had to be right about the car. But the one thing that was that when he was, the oil he was running on, he was buying that stuff at 50 pound a litre, or 50 p a litre, sorry in the supermarket, which was total junk, and I just couldn't get my head around it. He would spend maybe 15 to 30 times the amount per liter of oil on his car, but he wouldn't do it for himself. And I just, I just actually found that sort of incomprehensible, but it is the world we live in where, you know, you know things that should be of value, like the, the farmer, the people that grow food, the people that, you know, treat the earth with respect, you know, that does seem to be valued and, you know, why different things like governments completely and utterly uh, rip people off, support the corporations and stuff like that. While all that's going on, they're more concerned about, you know, what new treatment Kim Kardashian and one of those other synthetic people have had, you know, and I mean, we, we live in this crazy <laughs> insane world where people have got so distracted watching that electronic box that they actually are missing what's really happening to them. Why our rights are being eroded, why corporations take over more and more. But, you know, it's just a wee sort of offshoot from uh, help, but you just see all these different things happening. But, you know, again, you know, I haven't probably seen my doctor probably in, I don't know, realistically, probably for anything, probably 25 or 30 years. But, you know, anytime I want to renew a license, uh, you know, I have certain licenses, uh, or things like that, I'd have to go down and go down and see it. But, you know, those things take, you know, very, very few minutes and then I'm back out again. But my personal belief is that if you're relying on somebody like a doctor for your health, you are very, very doomed because although doctors can be very considered compassionate, caring people, they have went to medical school, which sort of... Uh, want you to buy into their belief system that there is only a pharmaceutical solution to any uh, condition that a person's uh, presenting. Like if you walked into the doctor today and says, oh, I'm feeling a bit down, I'm a bit depressed, what can you do for me? He wouldn't say, well, get up with your ass, go and exercise, work out, eat some good food and get yourself into better shape. He'd just go, right, lift, just lift the pod and go here, take two of these three times a day for the next two weeks. And then you go back two weeks later and it says, oh, it didn't really work. Oh, here, just up the dose. And then uh, six months later, it's still not working. Oh, uh, well, that's the other thing to say. Oh, you have to be on it for a considerable amount of time before uh, before it works. And then by the time you realize that it doesn't work, you're so hooked on them, you can't get off them. And uh, like, there's lots of ways to get you on this stuff, but there's no pathway to get back off it. And... Uh, to me, you want to be your own doctor. You want to educate yourself. And they would like to have you think that your health is so complicated that they need somebody like them to look after. And the thing is, is that, you know, doctors have one of the highest suicide rates in the world. They, uh, in general, are not very healthy people. 
and uh, a lot of times when you look at them, they're chronically stressed, they're overworked, and uh, they are definitely not uh, masters of personal congru congruency whenever it is they're trying to influence you about health. But uh, I don't know, is there anything else, Satirish, you'd like me to cover, or is there anything that no, sort I of... Think I, no, I think that was great, Justin. No, I think that was really informative. It was really uh, good information oh. there. Um, uh, if anyone has any questions, just uh, feel free to just post them on the right hand side. Um, um, we'll get whenever we get the questions, um, Justin will answer it and we'll send you a reply. Any questions you have, and um, that's really it, Justin. Um, we'll maybe do another one of these again in a couple of weeks, yeah, yeah, maybe in a week's time or two weeks' yeah. time. I'll be great, yeah. yeah. So, um, thanks very much for coming to the, to the hangout. Uh, to our webinar, sorry, this evening, and um, I will talk to you again soon. That's great. Thank you.